Lockheed Martin F-35 Joint Strike Fighters have made the first shipborne rolling vertical landings, SRVL, onto the Royal Navy's Prince of Wales aircraft carrier. In the latest round of developmental tests integrating the combat aircraft with the ship, currently taking place off the eastern U.S., F-35B Joint Strike Fighters from the F-35 Integrated Test Force performed the specially developed landing technique onto the ship's flight deck on October 19. The SRVL combines powered and wingborne lift to enable a rolling landing and stopping with the aircraft's brakes, rather than bringing the aircraft alongside the ship in a hover and executing a vertical landing. A rolling landing is seen as increasing the aircraft's ability to return to the ship with heavier loads such as expensive precision munitions that sometimes would have to be jettisoned into the sea if the aircraft were too heavy. The use of SRVL is forecast to give the F-35B a bring-back payload gain of around 2,000 pounds, the equivalent of four Raytheon Pavway IV precision-guided bombs. The SRVL was proven on the Navy's first carrier, HMS Queen Elizabeth, during trials in 2018, but the latest tests are intended to pave the way for training in the technique to make it available to operational frontline pilots. Also, the Prince of Wales is the only one of the two ships equipped with a gyro-stabilized version of the Bedford Array, a glided path alignment cue that allows F-35 pilots to fly an accurate path to the ship's deck. The F-35s also have performed the first launches and recoveries from the ship in the aircraft's so-called beast mode, equipped with external stores. Such heavier loads require longer run-ups to the ship's ski jump. According to the Royal Navy, Launches with just internal stores generally can occur from the 350 feet. Marker on the deck, but fully loaded F-35s need run-ups from the 850 feet. Marker near the stern. The trials, say officials, are about expanding the limits of the F-35 when operating from the new ships. Over the next few weeks, we will work together with the F-35 program to increase the capability of the world's most advanced fifth-generation stealth fighter alongside the UK's fifth-generation aircraft carrier, says Royal Navy Captain Richard Hewitt, the HMS Prince of Wales commanding officer. During this phase of our deployment, we will see the jet develop advanced landing and takeoff techniques, allowing it to recover heavier, turn around faster and launch with more weapons, Hewitt says. The same deployment also has seen the Prince of Wales working with U.S. Marine Corps V-22 Osprey tilt troders and Love one y Venom and AF-1Z Viper helicopters. It also will see the General Atomics Mulgave make a series of landings and takeoffs from the flight deck to demonstrate use of uncrewed aircraft systems from the ship. A Royal Navy spokesperson said, It's known in naval aviation parlance as beast mode. Every tower occupied by a weapon the internal bomb bay bristling. Fully loaded, the F-35B can deliver 22,000 pounds of destructive and defensive power, air-to-air -air and air-to-ground missiles and conventional and laser-guided bombs. The service described the fully loaded F-35B as an equivalent of the heaviest bomb carried by a WW-2 Lancaster bomber, e. the Grand Slam or the Earthquake Bomb, as it is popularly known. The Lancaster went down in history as European theater's most crucial aircraft that bombed Nazi Germany's military facilities and factories. Further describing what the fully loaded F-35B aboard the Prince of Wales looked like, the UK Navy said, it's nearly three times more than the UK's last carrier-borne strike aircraft, the Harrier GR9, over a decade ago. In this instance, the weapons bay of the specially modified F-35B from the U.S. Navy's Integrated Test Force was armed to the teeth with a combination of inert 1,000 pounds paveways and inert 500 pounds paveway IV laser-guided bombs. The latter, for one, has earned the reputation of being the Royal Air Force's go-to bomb for its ability to be guided to its target using laser, making the bombing run very precise and successful now. However, the service explained that depending on a whole host of factors, including weather, wind over the deck, humidity, a fully loaded Lightning might need a full run-up to the ski jump to get airborne, which means starting back at the 850 feet marker, not too far from the rear end of the flight deck. This is the first time either carrier has tested a full run-up, 
Additionally, it is the first time planes launched from HMS Prince of Wales have dropped bombs, albeit just entered practice models. Warrant Officer 1 John Etherington, the captain of the flight deck and a veteran of deck operations on U.S. carriers of the Nimitz class, gave the go to the pilots flying out the fully loaded beasts. It was impressive, launching the jet, all bombed up from the back of the flight deck, he said. It's exciting to see us pushing the boundaries of UK naval aviation. In addition, the F-35 Lightning II achieved yet another feat aboard the HMS Prince of Wales as it accomplished its first ever shipborne rolling vertical landing, SRVL. A British project, the SRVL, has been in the works for at least 10 years. It enables pilots to return to the ship after a mission with more stores in the aircraft. It is essentially a process for landing jump jet aircraft that makes use of both the lift from the wings and the vertical thrust from the jet engine. Maximizing the payload an aircraft can return with and avoiding the financial waste that results from dropping pricey weaponry into the sea to land vertically. The SRVL witnesses an aircraft land on the carrier after approaching the ship quickly from the rear. It then uses lift from the air above its wings and thrust from the nozzle to touch down and softly come to a rest. Until the recent test, the F-35 aircraft had only made vertical landings on the 3 billion pounds carrier, hovering beside it before falling onto the flight deck. Video of the recent landing on the flight deck was shared by the Royal Navy carrier on X, formerly known as Twitter. Having said that, while the F-35 continues to sweep sails and achieve new feats, the delivery of this fifth-generation stealth fighter jet has run into trouble. Lockheed Martin projects that, due to continuous delays in obtaining certification for a new flight control computer, it will only be able to deliver 97 F-35 Lightning Dew stealth fighters in 2023. Lockheed delivered 80 F-35s during the first nine months of 2023, a significant decrease from the 141 instances of the cutting-edge fighter aircraft it shipped in 2022. During a third-quarter earnings call on October 17, the chief executive James Tyklis said manufacturer Lockheed Martin said production issues are not the cause of the decrease in the rate and that the F-35 manufacturing is still on track with company goals. We are producing F-35s at a rate of 156 per year, Tyklis says. We expect to continue at that pace while simultaneously working to finalize TR3 software development and testing. Upgrades to the F-35, known as Technical Refresh 3 or TR3, include a more potent onboard computer processor and control software. The TR3 enhancements are essential to the F-35's next production version, or Block 4, which will greatly boost the fighter's onboard sensors, communications, and weaponry capabilities. The Pentagon and at least one foreign customer announced that they would not accept new F-35s in the TR-3 configuration until the type had obtained complete airworthiness approval due to the delays in certifying the upgraded package. Takelet predicted Lockheed would deliver between 100 and 125 F-35s by the end of the year after that statement in July. After the events at L-3 Harris, that number dropped once more to 97 in September and is currently stable. On October 17, Techlet affirmed that the TR-2 configuration will be used for all 2023 jet deliveries. Having said that, Lockheed strives to certify the latest version of the F-35 standard in the first half of 2024, and the first TR-3 aircraft should be delivered in April or June of that year. Although revenue is anticipated to suffer temporarily due to the halt in F-35 deliveries, Executives at Lockheed assert that other segments of the company are still doing well. We continue to see strong demand for missiles and munitions, says Chief Financial Officer Jay Malav. If you enjoy content like this, please go ahead and like and subscribe to this video because I appreciate all your support.